like to start off by saying thank you for that amazing introduction. I did write it myself, but, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you anyway. You know, as you can probably tell by my accent, I'm Scottish. I was brought up in a city called Glasgow. And the strange thing about Glasgow is it is known as the most unhealthiest city in the world. It's also known as the heart attack capital of Europe. However, I promise I won't die on stage. Because <laughs> I've got a really important message that I'd like to get across. And it's about fear, choice and opportunity. You know, being Scottish is actually pretty awesome. We've got some really amazing people that came from Scotland. You know, we invented penicillin, the telephone and the TV. But strangely enough, coming from a working class background, I was brought up with some really strong limiting beliefs. This is as good as it gets. You can only do so much. We heard from an amazing speaker earlier on today, and he was talking about his family's limiting beliefs based on his background of working class. So I had a very similar background. But you know what? It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that. We get a choice. We get to choose what we believe in. We get to choose how our life turns out. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about those belief systems. You know, I've been very, very lucky that I've got to work, you know, all over the world with a job that I used to do. Some very diverse culturally and religious backgrounds. But the one thing that rings true in, I would say, the majority of society is we all have very similar internal beliefs. We all have very similar limiting beliefs. The fear. Where fear controls a lot of what we do. We allow fear to control a lot of what we, we do. Now fear. Fear is only our comfort zone. We get to control our fear. We get to choose our own level of what we do with that fear and I'm going to give you an example so when I was just a young boy I think we'll all remember when we first learned to ride a bike so I remember my dad coming I was, about, I was around five years old and I was sitting in the, 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 the kitchen now we as a family similar to the story we heard earlier on we'd all sit around the dining table that was our family tradition. Every evening we sat around the table to make sure we ate our dinner. But we all sat around the table and my father says, it was a Friday afternoon, around maybe six o'clock. My father got up and he walks over to the window and he points out to the back garden. And he says, tomorrow you're going to learn to go on your bike like the big boys. We're going to take your stabilizers off. Now, if you don't know what stabilizers are, those are those little wheels on your bike at the side that stop you from falling. So my initial reaction was fear. I don't know how to go a bike. But that fear quickly transformed into excitement. Opportunity. Go a bike like the big boys. Yeah. That night I could hardly sleep. <laughs> I could hardly sleep. The night went past so fast. And I woke up in the morning, 6.30. Mum and Dad were still in bed. And I went downstairs and I get my Dad's tool bag. And I'm taking out, I don't know what tools we need, but I'm taking out all these tools and they're sitting at the back door, ready for the, my Dad coming to take the stabilizers off. Sure enough, an hour later, Dad gets up, we go outside, and he takes off the stabilizers within a few minutes. And the heart beat inside me. Again, I started to feel that fear. But the beauty is, when we're young, we're very, very good at taking fear. Put it in the back seat. We're really, really good at it. Because we don't know any different. Because we've an unlimited potential when we're younger. 
that we lose somewhere. Anyway, back to the bike. So my dad takes us out, outside onto the, the footpaths. And he's holding the bike and saying, Right, James, are you ready to go? And he let us go. Now, yes, I fell over. Not once, not twice, not three times. Many times. Yes, I skipped my knee. But I never gave up. We didn't know how to give up at that age. But something changes. Something inside us changes. We had our teens. Remember that fear that's in the back seat? Starts to come and sit in the passenger seat beside us. I mean, through our teenage years. And it becomes a kind of trusted advisor. <laughs> we kind of go for it every now and again and say, is this okay? Oh, okay, and we pull back. And we start to miss opportunities in life. And then we get to our 20s. And that fear starts to come and sit beside us. And we have our 30s. And guess who's driving the car now of life? <laughs> fear. Fear starts to take over our life. But why? It doesn't have to be like that. Going back to when we were younger, what creates that fear? What creates those limiting beliefs in us as we get older? We weren't born with them. We didn't have them when we were younger. We created core beliefs. The unfortunate part of a core belief is we didn't get a choice. Our core beliefs are created from the age of two till about seven. We don't get a choice, but what we do when we create those core beliefs is we go and reinforce those beliefs and we end up creating limiting beliefs in our life. Let me give you an example of that. So I remember my daughter, she was about two, two and a half. She was sitting at the dinner table. We carried on that tradition as well. She was sitting at the table in her little high chair and she leaned over and she spilled her milk. I had a choice as a parent. I think you remember earlier on we had a guy called David talking about his son running up, he'd lost his son. David made a choice that day. A good choice for setting the groundwork. You remember he talked about the, the core of the house, building the foundation. I had a choice that day as well with my daughter. Do I give her a row? Do I get on to her? Don't be silly. Or, do I say, don't worry darling. Remember daddy did that. Remember mummy did that. It's okay to spill things. That's when our core beliefs are created. How our parents, our brothers, our sisters react to things that we do. Now if I had a took that moment with my daughter and gave her a row. She could be a different person today as she grows up. That's when we create our belief system. So something along the line goes wrong and we start to reaffirm it. But it doesn't have to be that way. We get to make a choice. We get to choose what we do. When we start to recognise that we have those beliefs, we get to choose. I'm going to ask you a question. If someone came to you and gave you the opportunity to break free from the chains of fear and doubt, would you take it? If somebody gave you the opportunity to live with passion and purpose, would you take it? Or would you turn away and blame the world for why you live a life the way that you do? Live your dreams. Write your own story. Because how it ends, it's up to you. Thank you.